Hello, hello. So, I boiled today. And what I was doing was fixing this trash bag because when I boil, I have to then peel the plant elements off of, off of my books. And then I put the plant elements in a trash bag and then I use them for compost. So everything gets used, it all gets kind of back into the circle of life, right? The plant life. So here we go. The first one, um, I boiled with a couple bouquets, uh, what some flowers my mother got for her birthday last, last week or the week before, sorry, the week before. And then I had um, a pretty bouquet just because it was pretty. And I had, I actually used some leaves from my, my, our own yard, which I hadn't done in a while. So we're going to see how those turn out too. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. Okay. So we're going to do some unveiling. So my grunge paper is going to be really pretty because I made two-sided papers the whole way through. So that means my grunge paper is going to have some great designs on it. Look at that. This is just grunge paper. Oh my gosh. I wish it was, I wish it wasn't so delicate. I mean, it can't really be used for anything. I use it for um, tissue, like when I'm stuffing packages and things like that. But other than that, I don't use it. I don't want people to think that that's my board book paper because um, it's too weak to write on or even stitch in a book or anything like that. Look at that. Ugh. These were hydrangeas and rose petals. And I should have looked before I took them off. I think it's rose leaves. Yep, rose leaves. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's go to the next page. Very carefully, so don't rip anything. There we go. Oh, look at all those rose leaves and some hydrangeas. Now these hydrangeas were older and they were mixed color. Um, let's see. And so they made that gorgeous stain over there up here as well. I really like the texture that this part came under though. I don't usually use carnations and um, there were some carnations in this bunch of flowers that I used. I'm not sure they're going to give any color. I don't like to use carnations uh, because because a lot of them are dyed, you know, artificially dyed. So I don't use the ones that are artificially dyed. I try not to. Anyways, every once in a while I might. But that's really full and really, really pretty. So that went off. So pretty, so full, so pretty. Some more of those hydrangeas. They have pretty color to them because there were blues in there. But the blues didn't come out as much on... The hydrangea uh, on some of the hydrangeas. There's a lot of blue came from some of the other flowers that I was using. These are little mini roses, red roses. And the red roses get this green and pink tint depending on what I put with it. So, I'll go this way. Be really careful. Tore just a little bit, but that's okay. It'll kind of that kind of tear seals itself. Um, look at that hydrangea leaf. I love the blue green hydrangea leaves. Let's get these up first. There's some hydrangea and a rose leaf. Now this big. I guess it's a big zinnia. Didn't show the whole part over here because the hydrangea leaf was, or no, that wasn't the hydrangea leaf. I don't know. It did. It only got half of it, but that's okay because that's kind of neat on its own. Let's see what it does under the. Ah, uh, look at that! Holy cow! That's a beauty. Some rose leaves right here. 
Well, that's that's a cover page. Okay, I'm going to put these two down to dry. I have books all over here, all over my studio because I'm filming a book stitching class and I don't have my usual space to put these out. So you know when the um, flowers are really ready to give their all. And I have to say, I use these plants a little earlier than I normally do. Usually I wait till they're really, really dry or really dead or really close to dead. Um, but these, these were pretty fresh and goodness gracious, that's beautiful. They were ready. They were willing to give their, their color. I'm gonna pull that off. Oh my goodness. Look at that hydrangea leaf. That every leaf pretty much wants to go yellow and it's really odd, but when I put you know, the different hydrangea flowers and the rose petals near it, they tend to pick up different colors. Ah, oh, that is gorgeous. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Some of both sides, here's some rose leaves. Rose leaves and rose petals, and there's part of a carnation that I did use under here. Get all these up. These are hydrangeas and rose leaves. It comes up. So the carnation didn't really leave much design, just left some colors and kind of formed a mask, which is in its own right something that is fun to have. Because that was another carnation right there and it's pretty clear. They do get like translucent, which I think is pretty wild. Turn the page. Oh, I love when rose leaves do this um, almost illusion effect that they just kind of, you get an outline and the colors that happen on the inside are very much the colors of the rest of the page and it's just a really cool effect. Oh cool, so I think this was the one that I did a butterfly down the center. Some hydrangeas and had a little bit of a, I think this was, it wasn't supposed to be the head. I don't think it was because it shifted anyway, so it's not going to be. Usually I do heads a lot smaller, so I don't know why. Maybe I did put that in there, but I don't remember. But that's a pretty cool effect. Again, the carnations didn't really show, but this almost looks like the chambers of a heart. Just love it. Oh, look at that leaf. That leaf. Oh my gosh. Hmm. It's a little rose petals. Look at that daisy. It's gorgeous. It's the other side of it. So colors migrate around um, and mix because even though it's not a dye bath, the colors are coming out or the, or the essence of the plants are coming out and they're liquid and they're in a pot of water. So of course there's going to be movement. 
sometimes the movement's a lot. Like if I put beets or strawberries, they're so juicy that that color just kind of seeps through everything. Um, and it, they don't really stay with the plant stain that they make. The stain becomes like a white almost or a silver, but the color goes around. Ugh. It's just, look at that. Gorgeous. So, you know, it's a little, just a little disappointing that the petals of the carnations didn't come out. That's them. They're translucent, translucent pretty much. But I believe the color of them did. So at least the color is what is moving around and some of these leaves are picking up the pinks and the purples. The essence of those, very pretty, gorgeous, gorgeous. Here's a hydrangea leaf coming off on there. Put this down. Hydrangea leaf is really pretty. Look at those colors. So you can tell where there were less rose petals and less carnation colors, there is more yellow. So leave, the leaves, the hydrangea flowers, in fact, came out yellow, a good bit of yellow on these. Okay, so this one, this one ripped a bit, but it's okay. It'll still be get, it'll still get used either as a bookmark or part of a note card or part of something that I do. Nothing goes to waste. Yeah, see these little roses. Sometimes roses get really sticky. You know, sometimes they're fine. We looked it up so many pages that already had them, but for some reason it got really sticky on this one. The last one. I can already tell it's I can already tell it's gorgeous. Stuck but gorgeous. Ugh. Look at that leaf, and here is another one of those zinnias. Oh my gosh. I do love a good purple zinnia, because it does turn that green and blue. It's purple when it's out and it looks so pretty in the house. Then in the book, it turns that beautiful greenish blue, teal kind of together. Right. So here's the end of the cover. All a little bit sticky. Oh wow, that's a great place for that leaf. And this is what the hydrangea flowers did on that one. Look at this. This is the grunge paper. Grunge paper get, can get some really great stains, almost better than the other paper. It's just it's just too thin. It's, um, I just use it to wrap the pages so they don't get burnt from the pot of water. But look at how gorgeous. 
So this is the actual page, real page. Gorgeous, gorgeous grunge paper. Oh my gosh. That, that could be framed though, actually. Next up. So this is a thin pack that I did with some plants from around our house. So I don't know how they're going to turn it out, but we shall see. Those are pretty. Those were the ones I thought were going to work because I've used those before and they do like an outline. I can see them on my grunge paper. We'll see what it looks like on the actual paper. Oh yeah, that's pretty. These long ones didn't really do anything except add some of that lime, that fluorescent color. That was kind of neat. But yeah, those, those are gorgeous. Those are really pretty. long pieces. I'm not really crazy about long shapes anyways. And this was rose petals made in the or designed in a shape of a ro of a flower and then another little rose petal in the center. An orange rose petal in the center with the other ones were red. So it's kind of neat. It's a little different. Very fluorescent. Huh, that's an interesting result that, because I do see fluorescence in some of the other plants I have used in the past. So that's kind of a neat, neat little spray of color, I guess I would call it. Pretty cool. I love those I love those tones together the blue and the green and the purple those are my favorite colors together anyways well everything purple but these some of these roses are just really sticky yeah that one was sticky but it didn't rip I love how red roses end up with some green because of the combination that's together. Some more of these leaves from, from our yard. Oh look, it looks like a tree. And they're with the red rose petals and just a little bit of hydrangea here. That's so cool. And look at the impression. This is pretty deep, so the stems can make a really deep impression. I don't always put such thick stems in, but this was a small packet. It only had, didn't ha maybe half as many pages as I normally do in this packet. Um, so I just... oh, look at that green. Look at that. It's just gorgeous. That zinnia. I think I only had. How many zinnias did I have? I can't remember. But it's gorgeous. It's definitely gorgeous. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Let's see if I can pick that up. Oh, it's stuck on the grunge paper. Look at those. Oh my gosh. They have all the veins of the leaves are showing through there. Look at the butterfly. Look at the butterfly. That's just like the best discovery. It's 
is the second or third, second time I think I've used that butterfly. Last page. It's pretty sticky. Okay, these were also from our garden. These little, this thing. I don't think this really did anything except become slimy. Look how slimy. So the slime stuff, really, look at that. It's kind of like, I don't even want to describe what I think it is. And when you're scraping it, you have to be careful not to scrape the um, paper. Some of that residue I'll just leave on there as part of the nature. Wow, that was interesting. Lots to think about on that one. Very cool. This is my favorite combination is eucalyptus and Gerber daisies. Texture and color stains. Gorgeous. Love it. That's that dried status, I think it is. I can never remember the name of dried flowers, but that.
Oh, is that gorgeous? Wow. Whoa. Look at that. 